Okay, let's start drawing. So, to draw, um, we have two draw objects. We have lines and we have curves. Everything in Broderyware is created with either lines or curves or a combination of both. If we click the line button, you'll notice that the instruction will say choose a line endpoint, right click when finished. So if we choose one point here and one point here and we're done, we hit the right mouse button and we choose end drawing. And you notice now we have actually a stitch object which is stitched out. Um, the green big box is the starting point and the big red box is the ending point. Now you will notice that we also have a line here and that is the jump line which shows where it comes from. Everything starts from zero um, so that's why there's a point here and then this is the starting point. Now this is a simple graphic it's just a line um, there's not much to it you can see that it's already stitching out. Now to understand what is important about this line um, right now this line's not selected. The program's a little different than other programs in that we can't click it right now and select it well, actually, I wasn't telling the truth on that one. Um, because we have the select button clicked, um, these buttons uh, unselect, select, you click the object you want. Once it's selected, you'll notice that it will be highlighted in red, and it'll have some grip points indicated on each end. In this case, it's just a line, so there's only two grip points. So you'll also notice on the right, the property explorer will basically be showing you what the properties of this particular line is. The property explorer is going to be how you change it into different kinds of stitch, ob stitch objects. Right now, it's just a single stitch of using a length of stitches of 30. So you notice it just goes from the start point to the end point, and these little tick marks are each of the stitches. Now, if I change 30 to a different number, let's say 60, so it can be seen on the screen, you'll notice that the stitches will become bigger. Um, so in this particular case, this object single, the stitch length changes things on the stitch object. Uh, you notice here in the gray, I'll indicate how many stitches are for this particular line. Uh, down here it indicates how many stitches are for the whole design. In this case, we only have one object. Now, if we wanted to copy this object, we could go up to the edit menu and copy it, and then we could paste. You notice when it pastes, it actually moves it down. It's actually on top of the line because it moves it down the same distance in X and Y. Um, a lot of times that's not desirable. So if you hit the delete button, it'll get rid of it on the keyboard, or you can hit the delete up here and it'll get rid of it. Um, all these buttons only act on the object that's currently selected. So if we hit delete again, you notice nothing happens because the object that was selected was the one that was pasted. Uh, this object was no longer selected because it was copied. So um, to select it again, we just click select, which is already clicked, and we select the line, and it turns red. Now, um, so basically that's how, this is a very important fact to know is that you have to select the objects in order to modify them once you've drawn them. Um, it's a little different than other programs. You can't really do a mouse around them. Um, I found when you get a lot of objects on the screen, this ends up being somewhat easier for me. Um, there's other select options too. If you hover over all the toolbars, there will be a pop-up that will show you what it is. In this case, it's select. You can also select in the graphic object browser here. If I click that off, it unselects graphic and reselects it. You notice when I click select on and off, the property browser becomes available um, where I can change colors. So I'm going to change it to red, ish brown, and now it's a different color. There's other options here too. Um, Add stitches to lines. Generally what that does is it, well, also whenever you select anything in the property browser, it will show you down here what that particular property does. So uh, we can investigate these more later. There's a lot of functions here that um, don't need to be discussed for actually this drawing video. So 
I'm going to delete this line and show you something else. Um, so if we're going to draw a curve, we can select curve, and the instructions will tell you that choose a curve endpoint, and then the next point will be a control point, control point, endpoint. And it keeps on doing that. Control point, control point, endpoint, control point, control point, endpoint. Right mouse click and drawing. Now we have another graphic. This graphic happens to be three curves. Um, and you'll notice that there's control points and endpoints on the graphic. Um, now, you can draw a line and a curve on the same object as well. We're going to delete this. So let's say we want to do a rounded box. We can do that by clicking a line, doing one line, and then we go and click the curve, and then we can click the points for the rounded box. Now we want to go back to line, so we hit line. We want to go back to curve, so we hit curve. And we can finish the rounded box. So now you know we have, now you can see we have a rounded box. Um, the curves are all what's called beezers, which um, the control points will control the curvature of the curve. Uh, you can roughly approximate a circle by having the control points be in line with the endpoints. So let me show you that. Um, so now that the graphic's selected, um, we want to do something with it. So to do something with that, we have here the point function menu, which allows us to do all sorts of things with these points. So these are considered points. All these points are either control points or endpoints. This menu here is curve functions. It's things to do with the curves. And this is curve modification. So we won't talk about these right now. We'll just go on to the curve functions. Now, we can choose modify points. Once we do that, now we can actually move these points around. You notice they'll turn red when we hover over them. We click the mouse, and we can put the point somewhere else. Now you notice in the menu down, or the status bar here, it tells you what to do. So it says, click on the point to modify. So let's say in this case we're going to modify a control point. You notice that the curve now stretches out. And if I line this point up with the end point, I can roughly approximate a circle, depending on how good I am. We'll make this circle as well. Um, now these points are pretty good. Um, circle-wise, and we get this endpoint up here. So now we have basically an oval box. <clears throat> now, there's other there's other point functions here that are really useful, um, and a lot of them have to do with aligning things precisely. So this first one here aligns uh, points in the x direction, and the graphic kind of shows that they line up this way. So if we want to line up these points, let's say, we could choose that. And the graphic says, click on the point to align an X. So I kind of want this one to be aligned to that. So I'm going to click that. And then we click the second point, which is the point to align to. And you'll notice that this point moved. And I'll do the same thing with this point and this point, let's say. And then I'll we'll choose this point and that point. I gotta zoom in. This point. Whoop. Anyway, um, so there's other ones that actually might be more useful in this case, like a line point x and y. So I might choose that point and then line it to the other point. Click on that point and that point. So now they're aligned. I'm not doing a very good job at making this pretty, am I? Anyway, um, so then we can align in points in Y. So I want this point to be aligned to this point. So that goes down there. And then that point is pretty much aligned. So now we have basically a circle with rounded edges. Um, there's other ones here, mirror points. Um, we'll talk about that when we actually do a heart shape. Uh, this one here reverse point order will simply reverse the order of the graphic. So if I click that, the graphic changes order, which 
In this case, we really didn't want to do that because we have control points that go in the opposite direction. So in other words, this point would have gone over here. Um, really don't didn't want to do that in this case. Um, anyway, um, so that's basic editing um, from a point phase basis. We have other options here, make things horizontal, space them equally, etc. All right, so now that we have a graphic drawn, um, this single stitch is not really that exciting. Um, it shows that it's going to start and stop in the same place. If we choose double, it's going to also start and stop in the same place. Um, quad, triple, etc. will do the same thing. You can't really tell what it's doing when this point's up here. So I'm going to move this over to here. Um, and then so you can see what happens. So we got the single, so it basically starts here and ends here. Double, it's going to go to and back, come this way, all the way to the end, and come all the way back. And so basically the start point and end point is the same. Triple, basically it goes, it goes one step forward, one step back, one step forward. That's kind of like a bean stitch. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then quad basically goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and keeps on doing that. So the only one that actually runs all the way down and all the way back is the double. The other ones are like bean stitches where it's advancing as it's going. So that's basically the drawing and uh, the functions, um, some of the functions. Um, next video, we'll talk more about what these functions do, all these functions in this menu.